Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Saturday. Thanks for being here. We have two great guests, Newt Gingrich and Joey Piscatelli. Who's Joey Piscatelli? Very important. Stick with me. But before we get to our guests, democracy, voting. You know who likes the word democracy the most? Dictators, fascists, Marxists, autocrats. And apparently the Democrats, who don't really like to practice democracy. You know, they have voting in places like Russia and Iran, Venezuela and Turkey, North Korea, Syria, Cuba, Uzbekistan, Zimbabwe, Somalia, and a hundred other dictatorships, brutal regimes, genocidal regimes. They claim to be democracies that have the vote. The vote, when you go in and you vote, or you mail in your vote, that's not enough. Anybody can vote in any place on the face of the earth. Dictators use voting as a cover for dictatorships. But voting is crucial, isn't it? In this country, we vote for a representative government. We vote for a constitutional republic. When we vote, we want to be informed. We want to have knowledge. Who are we voting for? Who are we voting against? The president's extremely powerful. We've had wars to protect our constitutional republic, our representative republic, our right to vote. We had a civil war to end slavery in order to allow people to vote. We adopted the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. We've had civil rights battles for 100 years, more than one in the streets, in the courts, in the halls of Congress. We have fought for the right to vote, for everybody to have the right to vote. But to vote for what? What separates us and the way we vote and our voters from voters in Russia and Venezuela and Turkey? Information, knowledge. You're not supposed to just go to the polls. Oh, Democrat, Republican. Oh, woman, man. Oh, white. Oh, black. It's not identity politics, it's substance. You're voting for the most powerful representative in the nation. In fact, you're voting for the most powerful representative on the face of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, Kamala Harris and her party are running the dictator's election. This is a facade. What kind of nonsense is this? They pulled it with Biden, now they intend to pull it with Kamala Harris? No, I don't think so. She's making a mockery of democracy. She's making a mockery of voting. Kamala Harris, your selection as the Democrat Party nominee occurred well before last week. And that so-called convention that looked to me more like a Roman circus. You're running a campaign akin to a dictatorship, a monarchy. There is nothing democratic about it. You're the first presidential nominee who's never received a single vote from any real citizen to run for president. You blew out the nominee who did receive the votes, 15 million of them. We've never seen anything like this. And you talk about democracy. You usurped the primary process, and now you seek to circumvent the general election process. America, she's hiding from us. She's concealing her views from us. They're so radical. They're so repugnant. They're so immoral. She knows if you figure out what her policies are, or the 72 percent of the American people who aren't clear what she stands for, that you will defeat her in a landslide. Kamala Harris, you have a greater obligation than any candidate who's ever run for president to reveal yourself, to be questioned, to be scrutinized. That's right, to be vetted by we the people. That's our right. That's your obligation. You want to be president of the United States? Then earn it. Earn it. Engage. Debate. Tell us what you believe. Tell us where you're going to take this country. Don't hide it. Everybody's telling you, all the radicals in your party, all the grifters, all the pollsters, shh, wait till after the election. Then you can drop all the weight on the shoulders of the American people you want. They won't be able to do a damn thing about it. You need to mix it up. You need to meet the people. You need to be clear and precise about what you believe and what you stand. 
Who the hell do you think you are to disregard the people, to deceive the voters? You're running a campaign like Putin. You're running a campaign like Un. You're running a campaign like Xi. Well, this isn't communist China. It's not fascistic Russia. And it's not the inbred country of North Korea. It's not Iran. It's not Venezuela. It's not Cuba. It's the United States of America. And you're not running an American campaign. You want to be president of the United States? Then act like it. Oh, we have two debates. Who cares? You already ducked one because it's Fox. You're afraid of Fox? You're not going to be able to stare down Xi. You're not going to be able to stare down Putin. You're afraid of Fox? Seriously? You don't want to earn the presidency. You want it handed to you. And so we get into all the race stuff. We get into all the sex stuff. We get into all the stuff that doesn't matter when people are trying to put food on the table, when they're trying to pay for the fuel in their car, the school supplies, a roof over their head. None of the rest of it matters. What took place in Chicago at that convention was phony. It was a Hollywood show. Did you learn anything about Kamala Harris at that event? You didn't learn a damn thing. Nothing. Now, she's proposing, for those of us in the 28% who know what's taking place, she's proposing nation-changing, life-changing, society-changing, economics-changing policies. The most radical policies of any candidate in American history. If she sticks to those policies. Now, she's trying to persuade people who are paying attention. I'm not that radical. I'm not really going to do that. But she won't allow herself to be questioned. And by the way, she doesn't personally flip-flop. Her staff flip-flops for her. Now, if you're going to turn America into some kind of a Marxist Islamist state, some kind of a hellhole, then show yourself. Reveal yourself. Be the tough prosecutor. Be the courageous senator, the tough questioner. And let us confront you. Let us question you. Let us challenge you. You're running for president of the United States, not for the student council in some middle school. This isn't some backwoods third world country where you can get away with this stuff. We know what the media are, as I've been calling them, the state-run Pravda Al Jazeera media. You have them in the tank like Putin has the media in the tank, like Un has the media in the tank. Like the communists in Venezuela and Cuba have the media in the tank. Like Al Jazeera for Qatar, state-run media. So the media don't help us. We don't need media interaction. We don't need the media to interpret for you what you believe to us, particularly when you own them. They're bought and paid for. We need you to speak to we the people directly, without media, even without debates. Donald Trump goes everywhere. He goes in the black communities in the Bronx. He goes to Detroit. He goes to Philadelphia. He goes to small town USA. He goes to the suburbs. You only go where people will support you, in front of audiences that support you, the campaign of a dictator. Why don't you go into communities and reach out to all Americans? Do you want to be president of the United States or the president of the blue states? Who are you, Kamala Harris? You're the tough prosecutor. You're the Soros prosecutor. Open borders, close borders. Fracking, no fracking. Government-run health care, no, 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 no. Not government-run health care. Government-run food supplies and pricing. Oh, I didn't really mean that. No, not really. Who are you? What are you? People in this country have fought and died for the right to vote which means the right to vote with knowledge, the right to vote with information, to know who the candidates are. We fought a revolution over representative government. People died. They put their lives on their line. And all the way up to this moment, people put their lives on the line, their careers on the line, in order to vote. Not like they do in communist and fascist regimes, but like we do in the United States of America. You denigrate us. 
You dismiss us. You blow us off. You laugh about it. You're joyful about it. And you tell us. Just listen to what everybody says about you. You've got the dancers. You've got the singers. You've got the media. Why do you support destroying women's sports? Why do you oppose parental rights in schools? Why do you oppose parental rights when it comes to gender mutilation? What is a wealth tax but a tax on ownership on our homes and our businesses so the government can come in and steal them from us? Price controls. If you control the price of food, you control us. We can't survive without food. The government's going to control food. National government-run health care. How's that going to work? Open borders, illegals, access immediately to Medicare, Social Security, Medicaid, and you want them to vote. Well, that's that going to do to our country. You believe in nationalizing our drunk companies. You said you want to snatch their patents if they don't lower their prices. That means nationalizing drug companies. You want to eliminate the oil industry and gasoline. Do you know where electricity comes from? You don't want us to have a choice of what kind of car we can have, what kind of toaster, what kind of lawnmower, what kind of home we can have. You want to eliminate the Electoral College. You want to stack the Supreme Court. You want to eliminate the filibuster. You have a thoroughly Marxist socialist agenda. We want to talk to you about it before you destroy our country, turn it inside out and upside down. You want to run for president? This is your agenda? Then tell the 72% of Americans who don't know you exactly where you stand. Defend it. Persuade them. Explain it. It's the United States of America. Why are you hiding? Now, a couple other things about this convention. Every four years or so, the Obamas pop up that tell us what a racist nation we are. Every few years, they pop up, they go on stage, and they trash one Republican or another. I'm sick and tired of it. The Obamas live in the lap of luxury, despite all their revolutionary talk, despite their class warfare. I have a question directly for Barack and Michelle Obama. What exactly have you done for the black community? As president, what did you do, Barack? Since you've been president, you've become a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. What have you done for the black community that you claim to represent? How about Michelle? What have they done? Donald Trump has done more for the black community than you can ever do. When Donald Trump was in the private sector as a developer and a builder, he hired black people, as well as Latinos, Asian people, men, women, straight, gay, transitioning. It didn't matter. They got good salaries. They were able to get pensions and medical care. What the hell have you done? Donald Trump fought for school choice, like your two daughters went to one of the most expensive private schools in America, let alone D.C. Well, Donald Trump thinks that all children should have that opportunity, including poor kids, including poor black kids. You opposed it. You fought it. Donald Trump, working with Tim Scott, set up almost 9,000, 9,000 opportunity zones, meaning what? Zones in which you get tax breaks and other breaks for businesses to invest in poor communities, minority communities. What did you do? Criminal justice reform. You didn't push criminal justice reform. Donald Trump got criminal justice reform. And I could go on and on. At that convention, they claimed to represent the middle class, blue-collar workers. How so? Did you see many of them? I didn't know Oprah was a blue-collar worker or Legend was a blue-collar worker. I didn't know Pritzker was a blue-collar worker. It was a convention of multi-billionaires, oligarchs. Donald Trump, developer-builder, built a skyline. He worked with plumbers and electricians. He worked with painters and bricklayers. He worked with tile layers, drywall installers, all the buildings trades, all of them, all hardworking men and women, union, non-union, minority, majority, woman, male, everybody. And he didn't discriminate. What have you done, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, for the hardworking middle class? You haven't done a damn thing. Oh, and one other thing. Josh Shapiro. I hear you're Jewish. You're the Democrat governor of Pennsylvania. You were overlooked by Kamala Harris and her party. And you went up and you gave a speech, a disgusting, pathetic speech. And you accused Donald Trump of using anti-Semitic tropes. Let me tell you something, Josh Shapiro. You're a gutless wonder. As the Jewish American governor of Pennsylvania, you should have gotten up at that podium 
and you should have made a Martin Luther King-like speech to your party that you would not tolerate the growing anti-Semitism in your party. You should have called out Talib and Omar and AOC and Bernie Sanders by name. You should have condemned the fact that your candidate for vice president, Tim Walz, embraced not just any imam, any imam who supports the evisceration of the state of Israel, which means the extermination of the Israeli Jews. You didn't say a damn thing about that. You should have spoken up about your presidential nominee, who you wanted to run with. How dare she not undertake her function as the president of the Senate to welcome the prime minister of Israel into the halls of Congress? She meets secretly with the mayor of Dearborn, who's an Israel hater. She'll meet with anybody, but she wouldn't meet with him. Tell me, Josh, what have you done? for the Jewish community. You haven't done a damn thing. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Donald Trump, the man you attacked up there, you ask the Israeli people who their favorite president is, Donald Trump. He moved the embassy. He acknowledged the Golan Heights as sovereign to Israel. He cut off the PLO that had terrorist warrants on the heads of Jews and Americans. He cut off UNRWA that was funding Hamas. He had Iran on its back. He was starving that government. They didn't have a missile to fire at Israel. Hezbollah was in a box. The Houthis were in a box. You ask the Israelis, the Israeli Jews who they support for president of the United States. And Josh Shapiro, you got up there. You not only made an ass of yourself, it was contemptible. That was your moment to be a statesman. And you were not. You learn nothing from that convention. Now, the question is going forward. We have an election, an early election that starts, I believe the first date is Pennsylvania on September 16th. The earliest of the early votes, the keystone state is the key state. Are we going to allow our country to be turned into some joke, mockery of a democracy? To allow a Democrat candidate who didn't even get the legitimate nomination of her party to run for office like no other candidate in American history, to slide into the Oval Office, to conceal her Marxism, socialism, and her Islamism, to change the country after the election? Is that what we're going to do? I sure as hell hope not. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.